You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah, but it'll get you better. You need, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great, and I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back, WWDD. He, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? And I am excited. Harry, you ready to rock and roll? That's right, I am. Finally. We're still we're still hunkered down separately, but we're making it happen. Making it happen every day. Dre, you're in the building. Yes, sir. All day, every day. I feel like my internet is getting going crazy today because Andre's hello sounded like he was an alien. Marky D, what's going on, bro? My <laughs> man. What up? Funny what up? dude. Yeah, I'm Central. Known from all all over the place, doing it way big. Well, I mean, not now. Give it up for my man, <laughs> Mark <laughs> Dibble. I'm quarantined, kid. <laughs> Everything Damn. is shut down. This is Damn. it. This is all yeah. I got left. <laughs> yeah, it is what Talking it is. Talking to people on Zoom. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> now, me, me, me and Mark, we've known each other for a long time. Long time before I was slinging jokes. I was, right. slinging, I was slinging dick. <laughs> Feel me? Whoa, you gotta boy. Add some context to that. You <laughs> gotta add some real context. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta that. is a that. loose we'll sentence there. right it's there, good. my brother. We got a lot of, it was a whole, it's a whole show. We can, we can swear right away. There's a lot of explanation <laughs> happening with that. A lot of explaining to do. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Because you can't say, you can't say no homo no more. You gotta say, why not homo? <laughs> 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 That's right, although, uh, although Andre is mad LGBTQ a lot, he's mad LGBTQ. Oh, so, right, right, right. so um, yeah, Mark, I know Mark a long time, man. Mark, long, I met Mark uh, through his cousin, uh, male exotic dancer extraordinaire Sir Lancelot. <laughs> well, actually, he wasn't extraordinary in the beginning because Mark was his prop dude. <laughs> I'm, hey, I was his assistant. I had a proper title. I was an assistant to okay. my cousin that was an exotic dancer. That's what I was. You know? so, so what are the props that he would, what kind of props or my, my what, how did had, you assist? Every prop down. you can name because my, 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 my cousin was a new jack. So he had everything from a futon, a roses, a air pillow, mattress, a air mattress, mattress, air mattress. Stuffed I, animals. Point, we actually had a... a a night table to put the rose on top. I was like, what do we need a night table? <laughs> I need a night table to make it look official. I was like, come on, son. We don't need all that. He had a baby <laughs> pool. He, had, he used to take a bath in the baby he pool. Was, he was he was carrot top. Carrot top was dripping. Uh, props when, the, and when he was young, I hated him because he would because I would dance barefoot and he would put soapy water all over the floor. And I'm like, this thing, I'm not going after this nigga. You can keep I'm soaping going, up the man. dance floor. <laughs> so you'd have to have somebody come out there like one of the ball boys at the Madison nah, Square Garden Dante was just throwing to some towel sketches. down. <laughs> I would wear clogs. <laughs> I could wear some, some hard grip shoes. <laughs> I would wear some hippopotamus and some clogs. I would be naked with some clogs on. <laughs> Nigga stripping in some murals. Some <laughs> looking like, weird, looking like weird... Wesley Pipes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird choice to wear shower shoes. I mean, he's completely naked, but why did he only wear flip-flops? That's odd. <laughs> the floor would be... 
And um, if, and, if I remember correctly, Dante, your your thing was you used to pick up the biggest chick in the <laughs> in the ex- place. Uh, That's why I don't have a back now. I exactly. know that was it was it was thrilling though to see that. It was That's like, whoa, right. whoa, <laughs> he's never gonna get that one up. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> like Mark Henry on re- on 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 wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> And uh, Mar- and some some dude some dude got knocked out. I knocked some dude out because he wasn't paying money. That was, let- that was what Dante was known for knocking people out in a G string, which is <laughs> you can't really tell somebody you got knocked out by nah, doing a G string. So you got to keep that story really <laughs> hush. <laughs> you do this. Nobody knew. <laughs> Dante has the record for most knockouts with the least amount of clothing on. Yeah, absolutely. In all, absolutely. Of, in all of New York City. Absolutely. Naked knockouts. So, only other nigga that can different. give him a run for the money is like a porn star with a bad temper. Yeah, Just but they don't really fight. On on set. They don't really they fight. They don't really fight. I mean, you getting butt? Why would you be angry? You know what I mean? <laughs> Even in you, the UFC, they make you, you wear shorts, temper? you know? Like, you can't. The UFC, you can't just come out there in a banana hammock. And a lot, just... a lot of times, dudes didn't think they was gonna get knocked out because you was naked. Right, that's what I'm saying. They didn't think. But I will say this, Dante. After your, your reputation started going, I remember going to a club with Lance. This was in Brooklyn on Fulton Street. Uh-huh. This Jamaican dude, and he was like, "Yo, I ain't paying y'all." Everybody's like, "What?" <laughs> and we, everybody start coming toward him. Dude pulled out a gun. Oh, People yeah. still beefing, like, yo, I still want my money. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I guess we taking an L on this night. <laughs> but he started carrying, they start carrying guns because I think they heard about being knocked out with a dude in the G Street. Yeah, but huh? even the dude we did, I knocked the dude a couple dudes out with guns. Like, I mean, what you call I ran into Punisher. You remember Punisher? Yeah, yeah, I remember Punisher. Yeah, yeah. I ran into Punisher, and I remember Punisher. Punisher was another stripper, I gather. Yeah, Punisher was a stripper. He was actually on um Remember when uh, uh, Flavor Flav had the, uh, what was Fla- the? Flavor reality? of Love. Flavor of Love. So right. remember New York? Right, yeah. yeah. They had a spinoff with Miss New York. I Love New York, yeah. And I Love New York and Punisher was on that. Oh, uh, was he? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, he was on that for a while. And then, uh, but he, you know, they wouldn't get paid. So the dude wouldn't pay. He was like, yo, man, they go. They, they was calling me Mandingo. He's like, Mandingo, they won't pay me the money. And I would go and, you know, have a discussion with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do. Uh, yeah, but it, it's, it was it was wild. It was wild. Mark, we was, was kind of mad at, 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 we wasn't mad at Mark, but we was mad that um that his, his cousin had all them props. It's like, this nigga got... <laughs> Why this nigga got a baby pool? <laughs> what do you need a baby trampoline for? What you gonna do with a baby trampoline? <laughs> That's what he did, dude. He had a lot of How shit. long was his set that he needed all that stuff? I mean, he fit it ever. all in. He, he fit, fit it. He really did. I can't remember how long, but he fit that all in within the set. I mean, when he started out, he started with the props, but it, as he got more confident yeah. in his he dancing, just started dancing. He started, yeah, he started losing the prop. What do you do with the baby trampoline or whatever? <laughs> right? That's what to, like, I'm trying to figure out from a Have performer's you pers- so you, perspective. So you take a 500-pound woman, you lay on the floor, and then you bounce up the trampoline, and you... <laughs> See, I got to... Swat- Bloom! I gotta like go with Lance on snooker. this one. I gotta go with Lance on this one. That's entertaining. Yeah, it is. It was, I'd want to see that. I don't even want to see it. We're not saying it wasn't naked. entertaining. It's just a lot of it's a lot of work. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of work. Hey it was man, he was work. putting you to work, Mark. He, yes, he was creating was an economy, day, and I was not focused on that. I was focused on the women, so I was really yeah. not a good assistant at all. It was crazy because you would walk into a place and there would be eight hundred thirsty women in a in a spot. With no dudes, that's no the thing dudes. that young people don't understand. As as a guy, like y'all in y'all in there dance, I was just a civilian. I'm sitting there like, there's 600 women in here, and there's no dudes, no and no. Don't get me wrong, they will grab. Like I've brought guys in. Like I remember there was this club. They spit this club on uh, on 23rd Street called Demerara, not yeah, 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 yeah. 20, 24th Street, and the place held like about 150 people. They put 700 women in that spot, right? So we walk in, and I got two guys from the phone company, right? They just came. To, I was like, look, there's all these women. I can't take them all. Why don't you just come and get what we used to call the ricochet pussy? Like, bing, bing, bing. 
and then you, you, you're like, well, he can't get y'all, but I'm here, right? And two dudes I knew walked through the, they, we walked through the crowd because we used to go through the back, right? And I'm, and I, you know, in retrospect, you think like, you like I, it, this was my life every day. But like Mark would tell you, if you're a square dude and you first walk in there, you're like, what the fuck is going on? It's, not, it's any any dude. I don't care if you're square or not. It's just not you're not used to seeing that many women and they be they on fire. Yeah. So I'm telling you, they screaming, they yelling. You're like, what the freak? And you're then like, we just... walk we walk through the crowd and the women I had two dudes who were, you know, they weren't built, nobody. And they walked through, and the girls was grabbing their clothes and point, grabbing their dick and grabbing their ass. And when you dance, yeah, I got and just like, tips just standing there as an assistant. <laughs> they were like, "Here's a tip." I was like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> and we we walked through this crowd. It's this club. It's 150 people, fam, fire capacity. 700 people in there. We walked through, and these guys literally got molested. They got me too. From the yeah, time yeah. he walked in all the way to the back. So we go to the back. And at the time, we didn't have, there wasn't, we didn't have cell phones and stuff. So dudes used to beef up. You had to wake your dick up. So dudes would beef up. They'd get a little, they would get a black tail magazine. Do, I'm sorry, what did that have to do with cell phones at the time? We didn't, oh, you mean there wasn't any images to, right. to look you, at? You, okay. got, you, got, you, know got giant, you, you got magazines. I don't know about that. You got vagina in your pocket right now. You got titties in your pocket right now. That's right. All right, that makes more sense. I was like, how does so, the phone help you do that? All right. So we got a magazine, like a black tail magazine and stuff. And then that you, you pass around? God no, damn. everybody had their own, their own little greasy. Like <laughs> little greasy <laughs> magazine, <laughs> and so we get in the back, and the two dudes from the phone company's there, and it's a bunch of big dick dudes lined up. Everybody got a magazine out, and everybody like yo, and I'm like yo, what's up, yo, what's up? They're like yo, what's up? Everybody's jerking off, <laughs> and they used to take like a uh, because you know people use a cock ring, but the cock ring don't work good. They used to use ace bandage. Like cut a half an inch of ace band and you tie it behind the testicles. Right, right, yeah. And yeah. that was the 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 cock ring because if if an ace band should stay on your knee, it can stay on your dick. That's easy, right? So they <laughs> use the ace bandage and they would get hard and then they would you know like tie it off, and they would you know you had to let it out and then you come back and you beef up again and you go back out again and it, I, I guarantee you it wasn't healthy. Yeah. But I don't think probably not. Right. You know idea. what? It was Viagra before Viagra. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? And it was natural. It was yeah. in, in yeah. a certain yeah. way. You know what I'm saying? Little black tail magazine and yeah. boom, 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 boom. Old school. You know? And these, dudes, these kids today don't know how lucky they, don't they got it. And before those magazines, you'd have to just stare at a wall and see if there was a woman that <laughs> really hard. Was made out of Listen, the wood paneling. Yo, my uncle used to tell me they used to jerk off to the Lando Lakes girl. On the butter. Yeah, you know. The Indian chick on the butter, you ever heard that? Yeah, see, that's, they didn't even have magazines. Think about yeah. that before us. That's hilarious. Using Lando butter. Lakes, the hot Lando Lakes chick. That's butter so imagery. So the, but the, the dude, the two square dudes from the phone company came in. They got molested on the way in. They get into the back room, the dress room. It's eight dudes jerking off, right? Everybody give everybody the elbow pound. That's This was before Corona. We was doing the elbow pound. The elbow pound. You don't be jerking off. Hey, good to meet you. That's not good. Thanks, ah, no thanks. Yeah. So, um, and then I was like, I was like, you want something to drink? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a drink. I need a drink. I'm like, yo, here's some money. Go, you telling me with whatever. They'll hook you up. They're like, I'm not going out there. I'm like, <laughs> like, cause guys, guys didn't understand that that kind of energy. That kind of that kind of aggressive energy that they so have. What do you think that is? Does that build? Does that energy build? I know that. All right, they're horny because they're excited. It's a night out, and they're seeing male strippers. But this is before the show even starts, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. During, that. before, after, and yeah, on the I, line. No, I get why <laughs> during and after it would happen. I'm just curious about the before. Like you just well, were, women don't get to express themselves in that fashion. It's not enough. in society. It's not looked at to be cool so it's for them to be by themselves to act like men act when they're to around. treat you like a piece of meat. of meat right that's what yeah. they they, they mm -hmm. got to do and it's it's just as a man the first time you see it you're like whoa i didn't even know women could act like i mean you yeah. get, 
Like once I start doing a couple times, you're used to it, Dante. It's like it's a normal, yeah. you know, like, yeah. all right, whatever. This is whatever, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I would walk in the girls it. would grab my dick. I'd be like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, all right, good to see you. How's your mama? <laughs> mama mama good, right? Oh, she right here. And then some mama would grab my dick. It was just like you just get you get. It's a slippery slope. You get numb to it, you know. Yeah, you get you do get numb Jesus. to it. So but Mark, did, but, uh, how much rick how much ricochet pussy did you get? I mean, how much? I, did I you got get? enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> I mean, at eight hundred, you're still pulling some quality out of that, right? Yeah, I mean, no, it was it was the odds were with you. You can't, yeah, you could, yeah. you could have no game, and you're getting somebody out of that room. It's it's ridiculous. I feel like back in the day, I would be like, I would be like, hey, like, come on, let me in there. I'll do whatever. I'll mop the floors. I'll clean the sinks. <laughs> now, dudes didn't want to come. This dudes didn't want to come because they was like, I ain't going to see no male strippers. And right, they like, did. They, they, and all the men would be like, yo, you know, all the dudes is gay. I was like, I keep believing that if you want, my man. <laughs> they are banging your chicks right now. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was but awful. That was, that was the big oh, thing. Because guys didn't want to accept that. They were just like, no dude dares like that unless he's gay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> believe that if you want. <laughs> and hence, a lot of dudes got knocked out. I remember, I remember doing a... um. Doing a show in on on Bushwick and Gates at the Mason. Remember the Masonic Temple? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, and it was like a it was a because it was a time when you had private party would and be everything would have a, a male stripper and a female stripper for everything. Yeah, like you didn't have a party without a male stripper and a female stripper. And oh, I was crazy. for some birthday, some girl's birthday, and the dudes was on the balcony because you know you'd have the guys leave. Yeah, not leave, but go in the balcony for the girls, and then have the girls go up in the balcony for the guy, you know, whatever. And uh, and then when you say balcony, this is a venue balcony, not like a yeah, like like a hole, like it was a dance floor, and then it was a hole, like a catwalk all the way around, right? Got tables and stuff. And I'm dancing, and these dudes is chanting, "Go homo, go homo, go!" They're doing like the whole crowd. And it's throwing beer at me off the, off the, off the bus, spilling beer. It's just wild, man. You okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What happens after that? Because I know Dante Nero. You, man, did you I, leave right. peacefully? I was gonna go past this story, but all right. So <laughs> we're we're there. We're so always I new go, listeners. So you got. I don't even go past the story where you finish on niggas throwing beer on you while you're right, throwing beer off the thing. I stopped the. I start. I you tell, tell the, the DJ, DJ. cut the music off. Next motherfucker to throw some beer off me, I'm gonna bust they shit, right? And they all, Yo, you talking to me? I'm, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this dude, so I got, I got this dude, ex girl. I guess this is his ex girl. But like, you had to, like, people don't understand. I say this all the time. Like, going living up in Brooklyn. You know, in the '90s, was so crazy. It's real. Like it was. I can't. Like I ever think about that market. Like how did you survive? Like how did we no, live? No, seriously. Like seriously, dude. Because it's it's even with you knocking people out. You know, back then a lot of people were shooting too. Oh, they so were shooting. Like, you can't oh, yeah. just not. You know what I'm saying? You just can't knock anybody out and just be like, yo, you got to leave after. That's you why. You, no, out. that's why you got to knock them out quick. Quick. Yeah. You, right. You <laughs> knock them out as soon as the beef. You knock them out. Like I would. I would knock a dude out, and when the dude, his body is at like, like ten o'clock. Right. Like he didn't even fully fall. I'm already in the car. When he, when he <laughs> you gotta gets, go. You gotta go. When, he, when he's at like ten o'clock, nigga, I'm already gone. So I, I think this this dude had a, his ex girl or something. It was her birthday, and I got her on the floor, and I'm clawing all over and humping on her, and the dude grabs me by the shoulder. He goes, yo, that's my girl. I get up. Now, I see what you, you had to watch yourself. Because, I, like I say this, Mark, in the 90s, if you had, if can you imagine walking around with a pair of, like, like $500 beats on your head with the red cord? Right. Yeah, in yeah. the 90s, you would get murdered. you get murdered, yeah, you would. As soon as they saw the red cord, you was done. You couldn't do we used to do our, have our iPod, not iPad, iPod with the white headphones, and we used to put uh, regular headphones with it. <laughs> yeah. Because you didn't, you didn't want, because when they saw the white headphones, the dudes would stick you up. Remember Colin do, Quinn, uh, you ever see Colin Quinn, New York Story, his special about New York, and he no. talked about back in the day, uh, you'd see subway signs that said, 
Remember, it's chain snatching season. So oh, be yeah. careful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm real. But it's like I'm... chain snatching season. Not like, let's stop it. It's like, hey, no, cut this, your chains this, in. Yeah, this is happening. You just better prepare. Right. That's it. Uh, um, and the, the dude, like you would always see. The, I saw it. The dude comes, grabs me. Bang, I hit him. The whole balcony starts coming down. So it was like, kind of like a... um. It's like Kill Bill when the when the crazy 88s yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, because you had to. <laughs> they so start the balcony into came the out, and then they had a wide staircase, like a like a Gone with the Wind staircase. So the dudes, you could see the guy, they're coming right, and the strippers. We met them, went up the step. We met them on. So when they were running down, we was like ducking down and tossing them. <laughs> <laughs> over our head down the stairs and popping them right and then once you once you got them you had to beat them in the club because if you let them out the club then they got the guns was in the trunk so we in we beat these dudes up but then younger dudes was like pushing the dudes push them out of the club i go why'd you push them out the club and they're like we had to get them out i go i'm not now you gotta we're not going out there they're going to shoot us. It, it was literally like we were like stuck in no, Bushwing and Gates Masonic Temple waiting for the cops to come because we didn't want to go out and get shot. It was like, oh, like, and I mean, that was yeah. every weekend. That was, that was a regular, that was a good Thursday. That was a light. <laughs> no, seriously, that was every, but the comedy clubs were uh, very similar. You know what I'm saying? It yeah, was just, yeah, yeah. Pork knockers. Just, it was just the 90s was just, wow. It was just crazy, man. So. Yeah, it was so crazy. I remember going to pork knockers and they, they kidnapped Mike Epps. Oh, yeah, I was Mike, there tonight. Yeah, I was yeah there tonight. they kidnapped me. They had Mike Nepps in the chair. I, I Darnell used to tell this story all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, he was he had a beef with some girl and who, who I think it was this dude named Whirl. World, like this drug dealer named World, world and World, <laughs> World and his cousin Mike messed with Little Kim, <laughs> right? Right, he, he World from Little Kim and he and Mike, Mike as they was like, yeah, motherfucker. They had a gun on him and and they Darnell. They said Darnell, you vouch for this motherfucker. He was like, yo, I know him, but I don't know him no. <laughs> and they were trying to, they were trying to, they were extorting Mike Epps in the. But that's, but that's seventy-five grand. That's how gangster, that's how gangster the, the 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 guys back in Brooklyn was. They didn't give a Awful. shit who because Mike was popping at that time. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, they, he had they, a lot going on. They don't care who you were. You came in our turf. It was like, yo, you gotta pay your tax, my man. Because <laughs> he had just did. He did. Uh, because Chris Tucker had stopped, stopped doing the uh, stopped doing the Fridays movie, and Mike Epps was Day Day in uh, Fridays oh, yeah, too. Right. Right, and that's what, and that's what, what, how Mike, Mike blew up. But them dudes, them, them dudes was trying to extort him. Like he didn't come to Brooklyn for like ten years, because you couldn't. I mean, at least not in the hood, not and definitely not in the hood. But I mean, the comedy was crazy. Used to watch comedy dudes like you would go do comedy. I remember pork knockers. Yeah, pork knockers. Yeah. Pork knockers. Yeah. They would go shut the fuck up. <laughs> like you be doing your act, and they'd be like, yo, shut the fuck up. The fuck is you talking about? Um, love people. They used to shoot, and everybody would hit the floor, and then they would, if nobody got shot, and there was just somebody <laughs> shooting, they would get up and start. They would start partying again. Like they wouldn't literally. I literally saw we we what club? What club was they at? Uh, I can't remember the name of the club. Donnell was hosting. Got in a beef with some dude. Dude came up, swung on Donnell. Donnell hit him in the mouth, and Donnell held on to the mic. And kept the show going while he's like, nigga, let go of the mic. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it was let go wild. Of the mic, it, was a, it was a whole, I, because I used to produce comedy. I used to promote. Yeah, that's right. At the, yeah. what was the At name? World's Collide. With, 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 the, with, with the fruit. Which was a strip club, too. Yeah, with the fruit of Islam. Oh, 243. Yeah. 243, yes. 243. Yeah, the fruit, the fruit of Islam and, and, and World's Collide. The whole fruit of Islam, all the. Farrakhan dudes was doing the security and uh, insane. Insa I I still think about how like how did we survive? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, like no, because a lot of people didn't. So it's not just that. Yeah, it, it was it was crazy back then. It was got crazy. lucky. Got it lucky. lucky. It was lucky. Yo, but yo, do you remember this story? I remember Lance telling me this story. I cannot remember this dude's name. He's a dancer, but he ended up dying. 
because his thing was he used to put liquid in his mouth and blow yeah. flames. Yeah, he took it because he stole it from me. <laughs> yeah, you, but he, he swallowed it. And he it saw went, me. He, he huh. saw me. So I used to do this thing, Harry. I used to do this thing when I would do lighter fluid. Right, spit yeah. Spit right. flame. Like flame, like and Ricky I, the Dragon Steamboat type. Yeah, thing? and All I right. would, but I and like if I did it like three or four times at night, I would get high because the the lighter fluid leaks in through your the lining Skin. in your mouth. Yeah, and then you just be high over lighter fluid, right? Oh Which Jesus, I, you mean poisoned? By the yeah, way, yeah, poisoned. Like, high. Right, I get high. <laughs> you mean uh poisoned? That's what you it mean. Is. Almost dead. Right. <laughs> so the dude started doing. Part, like I used, people used to always steal my act, uh, pieces of my act. Lance stole a couple of my moves too. I still got beef with him. What are you, what are you stealing? <laughs> Come on. Mark, that's why. Oh, my, that's why we stole my chairlift. Mark, he stole my chairlift. That's why my chairlift. That's why everybody know that was my stunt. Mark, that's the whole. And uh, the dude, the dudes uh, put the the the, uh, the lighter fluid in his mouth. And it, he went to spit the lighter fluid, and uh, the the it, he dribbled it, and it 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 spilled on his on his car on his chest on the, like I had like a polyester shirt or something like some costume, and it, he burnt his chest and then he inhaled. He inhaled it. That's the burst. He, he inhaled. I got. I I forgot that. Inhaled the flames, and he and was the, okay that night. He died they, the next they day. They went home, went to sleep, and never woke up. It burnt is, his, mm. burnt the inside of his lungs. It was like never he was breathing. Up. He was breathing fire. Yeah, in his lungs. flame. It was like if you took a lighter and, and ended up dying. Die, ended up dying. Yeah. So when that happens, when a dude dies, the next show, I mean, do they? I'm wear like that pants? nigga shouldn't have took my my stunt. Yeah, the niggas, niggas just was like, yo, that nigga killed last night. <laughs> that nigga took, I, <laughs> stop trying to stop trying to do my stunts. That's what happens when you Damn. try to do Mandingo stunts. You'll die. You die. <laughs> Everybody else has black armbands on, and Dante's just running wild. And I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. That That's was the first one. That's karma. We had a dude. We had a dude that, like, he used to do. So there was a at that time. Like, I mean, first of all, I always say this. Like, it's I'm really proud of myself. How much? How much more progressive I am? Because hip hop is by nature homophobic. Like if you would grew up hip hop, it's it was homophobic. You know, we didn't have no rappers that wore dresses and 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 wrap arounds and stuff. You just that just didn't happen. And so, um, you you couldn't do if you did the the straight side, you couldn't do the get like there was gay dances and there was there was gay clubs and there was straight clubs. If you did the gay side, you couldn't do the straight side because the same thing you're talking about. We didn't want the reputation. Right, right, right. Of of being of everybody being gay, so you did one or the other, and this one dude was flip flopping back on on each side, and he he I don't know if he just well he was just dumb, but he went to the gay club and he took a Heineken bottle and fucked himself with a Heineken bottle. Oh. Like took a Heineken bottle. The guy remember Mega Body? I don't remember him. I don't remember. Uh, him. You do remember because he was in a car crash. And he got his legs crushed. What? And he was drum. He was dry. He was stripping out of a wheelchair. Are you serious? Ah. <laughs> that is <laughs> full phenomenal. Full cast. Because I mean, this is all how. This is the only way he made money. Right. Full cast came out in a wheelchair, and he used to crawl around on the ground. Right. So there was a dude who was a um was a little person. Right. Uh -huh. We had a little person. We had a, a dude. Was a little person stripper. Yeah, remember the little nah, Mexican son. dude, little Damn, muscle Mexican dude, little muscle Mexican. Yo, they had yo son. There was a cast of characters. Son. That doesn't so surprise was, me. But why is this, this is the worst thing? Avengers movie ever? The yeah. funniest to me, the funniest <laughs> thing is when you took those two. That world is so insulated. Yeah, yeah. That it better be. They're so used to women <laughs> coming at you. When we used to go to a regular club, Couldn't and I would go. Yeah, the, 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 the literally, 
you guys would stand in the middle of the dance floor and just pose like women supposed to come to you. It's like, nigga, this is a regular club. What is wrong with y'all? They're like, no, nah, they gonna come, son. They go. <laughs> yeah, but they there. also, but they also like there was such a crossover. They would come a lot of times. A lot of times they, they would, would because they, they knew would, you. Yeah, yeah, they knew you. Just that knew in. But there, there was a dude. Was a little person, right? There was this dude named Zuma. Zumba, the overweight lover, he was this big fat dude, <laughs> right? Who had a you remember that dude from Queen? He, he was he had diabetes, right? And he he had the G string, like his G string was all stretched out of shape. So he he would take like a half hour to put because he couldn't find out which That's fucking it, gross. It looked like a triangle. So he would like spin it. And then uh and you had the dude in the wheelchair. And I remember MC in the show. It was I was emceeing a show for somebody else, and they had the the, the 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 little dude came out, then the fat dude came out, and then the dude with the wheelchair came out, and and the girls was looking at me like, like what the fuck? What are we? I'm like, yo, this is not my show. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just introduced. It was crazy because you would like the, the fat dude used to make money. Cause well, that guys will make money. If you can move, you good. Well, it wasn't good. even that. I mean, they used to. He was so fat that it was like a joke. So right. they would hire me as the regular stripper, but they would hire him first. Uh, as a novelty act. As a novelty, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, he sometimes he would come out dressed like a pumpkin. Like he, he for Halloween, he'd be a pumpkin. <laughs> That's fucking wild. It was insane. But I, I'll tell you, this is the thing about that. I, here's what I want to know, Mark. Being around that. What did it teach you about women? Oh, man, I don't. I, I mean, I, I definitely look at women differently after how uninhibited they were around you guys. I was just yeah. like, oh, man. And you guys basically could do whatever y'all wanted to do, which you was. You could grab them by the pussy. You could. Really? <laughs> you really could. It was all. I mean, I would go in the green room sometimes and girls would be doing whatever with the strip. And we'd still be having a conversation. Yo, man, you're on the five. All right. I'm on. All right. All right. Hey, having a full yeah. conversation while you're getting some head from somebody. And it's just, yeah, it was just crazy. Weird. It was and crazy. Did, did it affect your. Like your trust level with women? Uh, I don't think it did. I don't. No. I, I did, yeah, because I, you know, as much as much as you saw women act crazy, there were always them women on the outskirts that were like, "Yeah, I ain't that crazy." Yeah, I'm they were legitimate. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just watch and see what's going. On. You know what I'm saying? So there were all types of women within that crowd. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah, but I mean, I because the thing for for a lot of guys, including for me, for a while, I just. I was like, cause my, my idea of women was my mom and you know, right. people that I knew. And then to see these women, the way they were acting, I was like, Oh my, like this goes down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even you were like that. That's I was, yeah. I was shocked. I mean, it took me about a good two months for me. I was like, I cannot believe women act this way. But then I was just like, Oh, this is, then you start to analyze it. You're like, yo, they're getting to be like, Men get they the don't big, get it right. They don't, they don't get, a get a chance, chance to do that. They don't get a chance. Or at to least they didn't. That. Like things have changed a lot, but they didn't get a chance to do that. Right. And, you the, think and go ahead. That, that that's in them the whole time, or is this just sure like it is. sure? sure. It is. And, yeah. and, and, it, and if you don't ever get to explore that avenue, when you get a chance, it's like it's like a keg. It's like it's a volcano. It's like boom. It's like and it's it, like that rum spring. They really they really tapped into rum. it, man. And the other thing, the other thing that yeah. they felt like you were so you were so bereft of any honor, like that that you couldn't judge them. Right. So That's anything that they wanted to do, anything that they wanted to do, you didn't like that word bereft. You didn't like. I, that? I didn't say. I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> like I didn't it. say that. I just that, was like. I was that, like. All right. <laughs> all Dante, right, that, that look wasn't disdain; it was confusion. All right, all right. Okay. That <laughs> that, Andre looks the same when he's mad that he is when he's perplexed because both of those things <laughs> combine. And he gets it. furious. He doesn't know a word, so then he has. To Andre don't have out. emotions. Heard, he don't have. Emotions. I heard bereft, and I was like, I ain't know he was on that type of time. Yeah. <laughs> Who here's Jewish? Andre thought, but hey, like, yeah, but you, you, you. You know, like anything in their mind that they thought they want ever in their wildest dream, they thought that they could do. They they thought they could do it with you because you wouldn't judge them because right. of what you do. And so that's they, really what it is. They it, treated it, you like a piece of meat. Yes. I will say this, though. It made me more confident around women because I, I took from what you guys 
Yeah, I, I learned from what you guys did, which y'all y'all did with such confidence. Whatever you yeah. did, dance, you have to when you're on yeah. that stage. You have yeah. to be confident, otherwise they're not gonna they ain't gonna throw no singles, they ain't gonna scream. They go, but I used that, and I was like, oh, okay, this is what women like. They like a man who knows what he wants, whether that be right or wrong. At least right, right. confident in that choice. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What, I, well, I it's also it's also like like you talk about um Lance in the beginning he had all these props right, right. and the thing was because guys really don't know like you think somebody cares whether or not you got a night table with a rose in it you right. think that having a baby pool is important right you think all these and and so you don't really understand how women perceive attraction you have to figure that out the only way you the only way you make money is by figuring out how women's attraction is different than how women perceive attraction different than men. Right. Um, so, like, if you go to a male strip show, if you go to a female, you go to a strip club, and men are there, fat ass and some titties, I guess, see, I'm in. You know, dudes are in. Long, I mean, even when they, look, even if they they ain't don't look good, they still naked. You like I'm still in, you know. <laughs> I I'll look. I was always always. I used to say, uh, uh, sex for guys like pizza, like it's sauce and cheese and bread and bread. I mean, even if it's lousy, it's still pretty good. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. And, and sex for a woman is more like egg salad. Like you gotta be in the mood for it. It's gotta have the right ingredients. And if it's been laying around for a while, you're probably going to throw up later. So it's like they, <laughs> they, you know, understand. All the, the circumstances su- have to be correct it's for the, a woman. Su- like, it's the devil's in the detail. Yeah. Like they look at the, like if you're humping the floor, they look at the arch of your back. They look at, um, they look at your fingers. Like, you, 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 you know, just the way you move. As opposed to the fact that when men just go, well, it's jiggling, it's moving. That's yeah. and if it and if she does it well, that's better. But even if it ain't better, I'm still in. It's so where women would look at the intricacies of of what you that, do. That also goes into the way who we choose. Like a guy, I mean, I don't know. I'm guilty of this. Like if I if I'm at a drive through or whatever, and I see a hot girl working there, I'm like, all right, how do I make myself part of that? You know, like where right. a woman is. A woman cares like what your career is, what you're doing, what you're doing in life, what well, you're going yeah, towards. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think to, on the, to an after extent. the fact, after the fact, like after the fact. But initially, it's a the attraction is a visceral thing, it's right? A, but it's the, a, the attraction can work in reverse. Like a guy who's not necessarily good looking but has a lot of power can get a woman. Like I remember they when they yeah, used to do these surveys not, and they said like Tony Soprano was like high on the list of women uh, yeah but that's because that was more because he was decisive his decisive right Brown was decisive and powerful and those things but those but are, my point com- is there's no woman ugly uh more decisive enough to get over being ugly no no we're not. Yeah, unfortunately yeah yeah right. but be yeah. honest dudes if I you make a lot of good that's, decisions. that's not true <laughs> that's not really ugly true because a ugly chick that's like down like a ride or die like whatever so she could earn some dick. <laughs> she might have right. to take a bullet. Right, right. She, well, she going to have to do stuff that other people ain't doing. Yeah, yep. and, and a guy would be like, okay, well, she's ugly, but it's, she's not attractive. But, you know, there's the anal. There's like, the oh, drug the head game is crazy. The da, 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 da. A dude will go, all right, I'm in. He'll, he will, a dude will hedge his bets. Right. Where, where right. if a woman is, t- the minute she's turned off, she's t- it's done. So, like, I think what I learned from that is that when you were when you were dancing, there were these subtle things that you could do that would communicate certain things. Like you, like you can't say, um, you can't like you. It's the worst thing in the world for a guy to say. You know, I own a Porsche. If you say that to a girl, she'll be like, "Ugh, he's awful," right? Or she'll yes you to death. Oh, I got a lot of money. You know, I own this business. Uh, she'll go, yeah, all right, I'm going to take your money, but she don't like you. Whereas if you're very confident and then you go to pick her up for dinner and then you roll up with the Porsche, then she's like, oh, this dude had, you know, 
he got shit and he's not even bragging about the stuff that he got. So it's almost like you're communicating that my value is more important than my material things. Where I know a guy, he, I mean, I, I don't know if you remember Antara rims, like he had an Audi 8 and he, there was these rims that was hot in the 90s. And he was like, yo, I, yo, if I had my car with my Antara rims, yo, I, I, yo I, I, I walk out of here with all these chicks. And it was like they really thought that the value, their personal value, was whatever their material oh, things yeah, were. Yeah, no, nah, that didn't work with the strippers at all. No. Nah. Uh, well, them niggas was broke anyway, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but but you get people like so for instance, like you would have, you know, like the dudes would take sometimes they would take whipped cream and they put whipped cream on the girls cleavage and eat it off or put it on their legs or put it on their thighs or whatever under their dress and then eat it off. But then I remember a dude, so like conceptually, there's guys who don't really understand, they don't understand the eroticism of that. So I remember a dude who had an apple strudel, like he took an <laughs> apple strudel and he laid an apple strudel in between a girl's legs and he had the big salad forks and he was eating it and, and, and you got like, you're like, there's a, there's a distinct difference <laughs> In, <laughs> I'm putting some oxtails on a bitch back. <laughs> on a <her> back. <laughs> yup. Come here, bitch. Give me some cocoa bread. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> some curry goat. Then yeah, you got yeah. hot, you got pepper, too much pepper. Now she got a yeast infection. <laughs> <A> butthole burning. <laughs> got jerk seasoning dripping. <laughs> but you you learn that was the thing that taught me to, to learn that you learn to com you have to communicate value and sex appeal and confidence you can't say it verbally you have to communicate so stripping you had to learn how to communicate it in dance and then to transfer that to uh when you're going out on a date like a lot of dudes couldn't make that transition like i know a lot of dudes was getting laid like crazy because they were strippers and in the minute they stopped and they were squares like you said they had no game at all because okay. they were so... They so used to women coming at them instead of them having to approach women. So it's yeah. like they did a total loss. It's like man, a stripper Cinderella. And, and it's what? Yeah. What'd you say, Dre? Stripper Cinderella. Yeah, and, well, here's the thing. I, and, I, you know, a lot of times I'll do I'll do a lot of um, uh, consultations. I'll do the one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, DanteNero.com, click on consult and go. You can book time with me to talk. But... A lot of times, uh, Indian dudes and guys, Muslim dudes, they got no game because if they came from Iraq and Iran <laughs> and Syria, like your 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 relationships are set up. Like people set those relationships up. But there's your parents are setting them. So how do you learn to to not only that, you, but it's also basically different. It's also religiously forbidden to even talk to a woman without. Her right. having a, a male escort or a brother or whomever around, depending on how hardcore the religion is. So you can't even practice it. But then when they come to they come to America and it's like all, you know, it's like free fall. And now you got some chicken in, in, that, that was in a in a her job before. And now she's in a bikini and then you ain't got no game. Like you get a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes who will like, I, I mean, I get this all the time. Indian dudes, Muslim dudes. They girl like and once their woman has become Americanized, they get in the business because they never learned, you know, like being in America, you know, I think I started like liking girls. I was like in third. I mean, I like girls from first grade, but I like started liking girls where it was like me pulling, pulling ponytails and stuff like that. And at, th at third grade. And so you you learn this kind of social social interaction at a very young age and you escalate it and you hone it throughout your whole childhood all the way up. And so when you're, you know, if you're, you know, if you're a guy who's had, you know, arranged relationships and stuff, or, you know, like arranged marriages, and then all of a sudden you're in a situation where now you got to sell yourself, you have no idea how you haven't. Yeah, you got no point of reference. Uh, you, you're stuck. Yeah. Stuck. I think it's, Past that, even if you think about just the way they, their culture is, like yeah. they can just oh, yeah. pull up on a girl differently than they could pull up on one here. Oh yeah, yeah. Back in like India, it's just it's okay to just be wild, rough. 
Yeah, and and you could you know they I remember remember that thing they had here where the where the, the mother, father, and the son got arrested because it was Indian girl. Um, she wasn't she wasn't being obedient, and the mother came up from India to beat her. <laughs> and they all got they all got arrested. <laughs> yeah, they came up, they kicked the door in, and she called the cops. And they because this was their culture, this kind of abusive culture. So yeah. it's it's a weird it, it's a dynamic. I say this all the time. It's like two things that a guy is supposed to be good at with no practice is sex and relationships. And the only way you get good at sex is by having sex with people. Um, the only way you get good at relationships is by having relationships. You have to have those little puppy love relationships at third grade and fourth grade. And, you know, and then you, you learn to kiss, then you learn the French kiss. You have to, you graduate and you learn these techniques. And most guys are not like, especially now, Considering that there's none of that, there's no, you know what I mean. There's no practice ground, and now you know it's, it's people go, well, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to do this. well. The thing is, it's really respect. It's really on a respect level because I've never wanted to have sex with somebody who didn't want to have sex with me, and yeah, so. That's fine. But that's because I had. You know, there was a certain amount of value that I have myself. It was like, if you don't want me, somebody else will. Right. And I'm okay right. with that. But, you know, if you don't want to do it, I don't want to, you know, I don't want you to, I don't want you to go down on me and then hold your, you, you doing this. Like, uh, <laughs> like, that's, that ain't fun. That doesn't make me feel, uh, it doesn't make, it doesn't turn me on. That, so it's, it's really a level of empathy that you learn that, that you have to learn. And that's what you learn as an adult. Like you, you learn that you want to be treated a certain way. Then what the, 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 the flip side of it is that then you feel like having sex that a woman give having or a woman allowing you to have sex with her. It's a privilege to you. So you're willing to sacrifice all of your self-respect so that you could have sex with her. So you will literally misrepresent who you are so that you could have sex. And then when she finds out, it's just like anything else. If you bought, if you buy a product, if you go buy someone on Amazon and it says that it, it, the description says this, and then when you get it in the mail, it's something else, you get buyer's remorse. So the same thing happens with a dude. If, you, if a dude will do anything to get laid, he'll say anything, do anything. But then, the fact that he's willing to say anything and do anything is the thing that makes him less valuable because you ain't really, you don't really stand for shit. There's no substance to right. your personality in the first place. You know, that's why I say be honest straight up front. Just yeah. Tell the woman, I ain't shit. <laughs> what it's going to be. <laughs> women, women actually find that refreshing and funny. <laughs> right, they think it's funny, but it's a lot of times they don't think you're honest. You don't think you're not you're being serious. honest, right? Exactly. And, and you like, and then you got like, I told you I wasn't shit. It, it was <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you like, and she's like, oh, he did. You said it, but you didn't say it. Say it. No, I it. no, I said it. So it's a weird. I mean, I I think that was the first just stripping and understanding how to communicate that in the performance said to me, even at, in my twenties, when I was in my twenties said to me that, Oh, this is different that we perceive attraction different. We communicate different. You know, that, that thing you should say men are from Venus and women are from Mars, Yeah. but it's really, we do. And what's, which is really interesting because you constantly get everybody saying that, we're all the same. Like there's that less gender, you know, because gender is so much more fluid. Right. That, but what, and, and I do agree with that to a certain extent. So, you know, me and Harry was talking about this before. So I used to say masculine and feminine. Right. And, and then we've had, we've had um, lesbians on with, with, lesbians with girl problems and gay dudes with guy problems and stuff and so what They're i feel is problems they really it, are all it, the same problems it's not masculine and feminine directly but it becomes dominant and submissive like there's always a stronger person in the relationship and that stronger person always sets sets the dynamic of what the relationship is now 
the difference is, is, you know, uh, you, you know, people get mad when you say this, but women are physically have less muscle. They're not as overall, generally, they're not strong. So a woman has to be careful about, she has to worry about getting raped. She has to worry about getting taken advantage of. And so those things, so the safety factor of a guy who's communicating strong, um, dominant energy, but not abusive energy is what's attractive. And the, the, you know how guys will always say, oh, all they want is the bad boys. Yeah, they want the bad boys because the bad boys are confident and direct in their approach. And their bad boys are going to go, this is what I want and I deserve that, right? The problem is the, there's no empathy and then it becomes abusive, you know, like the, the the bad boys become abusive because they're just not even considering what the woman feels or what she doesn't feel. You know, um, did, you, did you hear that story, Dante, about uh, Pepper from Salt and Pepper? No, I'm, uh, she she wrote that uh, she turned down Will Smith that she regrets t- turning <laughs> him down back in the day because he wasn't like thuggish enough. Yeah, right, you. right. Well, right. I mean, you know who she she fucked with. Um. The stretch or some stretch, shit. Stretch, naughty by nature, stretch, right. yeah. from naughty by nature and naughty by and he's still walking around with a he was walking around with a bandana on before corona like <laughs> 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 like that was his regular attire but tretch was a thug and if what you if you like tretch right then you probably not gonna like will smith i mean i think that's different now and he, i think will smith is much more masculine now than he went, went but he was the nice rapper Right. You know, I thought she wrote. I thought Will was really cute, and we would hang out a lot on the road. He liked to take care of me and never let me spend a dime. He was the kind of guy, real the kind of guy, real generous. I remember uh, when they won their first award. They asked me to go out with them. He asked me to go out with them afterwards. I was he was so excited. We were just walking down the street to grab something, and then she goes, "Uh, I couldn't appreciate a nice guy like Will. He wasn't thug enough. I was attracted to thugs and hoodlums. <laughs> Will was too nice to me." Yeah. yeah. Okay. The the real ba- like what I find now is like the real balance is is being a nice guy but not letting somebody walk over. Yeah. Because you know, my, Mark used to have a joke and he used to say he had rate relationship face. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> anybody, he was any even if it was like a hookup, she was like, "Yeah, you, we should, we should." I, I on, got I, that. Yo, I got that joke from two forty three. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? What was we, the concept? Me, me, Todd, and Dean went there, and I'm talking. You know, you talking to the strippers, yeah. And the stripper just had a no way saying, "What are you doing in here? You don't belong." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Was just feeling this dude. Up. Why are you talking to me like that?" She was like, "You don't belong." <laughs> I was like, and Todd was just roasting me the whole night, like, "Dude, what is wrong with you? Why are you talking?" And by the end of the night, we're having a pleasant conversation, but it didn't lead to sex or anything like that. It was just. It became a relationship type thing. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's right, where I got right, that right, joke right. from. And I just, you know, I look innocent. I look young. So it's just like, she's like, what are you doing here? Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is no place for you. <laughs> you get you get life funny. advice. You get life advice from a stripper. From a stripper. I'm like, hey, <laughs> listen, I'm going to turn I'm gonna go turn this trick. When I come back, I need to, you need to get your life together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, I don't know who these guys are, but I don't know why they would bring you here. It's ridiculous, <laughs> but it, it, it is, it's weird. It's, it's the dynamic of that. It's, it's the balance of, of, of communicating, you know, some level of kindness, but still I'm not going to take no shit. Like right. I'm not going, you know, right, right. I, I, I'm not going to just let you, 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 I'm not going to just disregard my happiness because you might fuck me, you know, right. and I'm not willing to change who I am just so that you could fuck me you know um but like i said the, we the the you know it really the adjustment for me was understanding that it wasn't just masculine and feminine it was it's dominant and submissive and that that exists in every relationship and the thing is when you talk about dom being dominant or like being in control it doesn't mean being abusive or aggressive it just means holding your own in certain conversations especially when sometimes women will have these questions and things where they're silly questions or they're, they're questions to trick you up. Cause they're sort of a test in a Probably weird way. Knows, would you still date me? Right. And I just, no. go, I'm not answering that. It's a silly question, <laughs> but why not? I'm just not doing it. 
And then if it escalates, like, all right, so you don't want to answer questions? Yeah, I said, I don't, I don't want to answer that question. I don't think it's, a, oh, okay. And then if it becomes like, well, maybe we should break up, you go, okay, then if we're going to break up over that, then I guess, then we will. Like, if that's or the other one, do. if they ask you if you think their friend is hot, that dumb shit. Yeah, but if you ask me that, I'm going to tell you, yeah. I'll tell yeah, you, yeah. I'm going to tell you straight up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think she's smoking. <laughs> you know she's smoking. You know she's smoking. That's why you asked me. Right? Exactly. So I had, you know your friend, thick bitch. <laughs> I, there was a. Uh, I was seeing this girl, and she goes, uh, "You know, we were deciding to become exclusive, right?" And she goes, uh, "And just we're watching some today. movie or whatever where people are flirting." And she goes, "Are you going to miss flirting with other girls?" And I go, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am." <laughs> and That's then pretty she, good at it, huh? No, I was saying he's pretty good at it. Yeah, I mean, and she goes, "Oh, okay." And I go, "Well, yeah, I want you to know because if you ask me out, don't I? I, I it, don't it ask me something. I'm a. I'm don't, not, you, then don't think I'm a, because don't that, ask questions you might not want the answer to. Right. Also, and then the other thing is like it's a sacrifice I'm making. Just so you understand, like me not being with other women is something I'm giving up for you, as opposed to guys who you know, go into the relationship and, oh, no, of course, I don't love anyone but you. I don't see anybody. That, that's a lie. We all, and they do too. Women do also. Everybody yeah. looks at other people and sees attraction. So why do you lie about it to try to, it's not even preserving. They lied about it so they could go to the strip club and end up in Lancelot's baby pool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Every Saturday. Every, Every Saturday. Saturday. You ever get a regular at, a strip, at the strip joint? Nothing the about bitch. regulars. There was a bunch of regulars. regulars. There. Yeah. But, like you have regular crews. Yeah. Like one queen bee who used That's to get funny. all the tickets for everybody and organize everybody. So you had different tables of regulars that when you came in, you had you had to go and greet them. Hey, how y'all doing? All right. And you know, thanks for coming out, please. <laughs> like, like they That's funny. They oh, yeah. or they would go, let, let me, I got it. I got you. They, I, I got, I got to introduce you to my cousins here from Alabama. You got to meet my cousin. Blah, 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 blah. It was like a whole thing, and that was like every every weekend. Like I mean, every couple times. No, they was weeks. regular, straight regulars every. Yeah, but the but the commute. The thing is, the community. I think I did well <laughs> because I understood that in the performance you were communicating. You were you were communicating in different ways. Your acts communicated certain things. Now here's a here's the thing. Like, um, your cousin when he really started dancing, right? Yeah. He really started taking dance classes. It was like he was uh, he was like an um, like man. I, there there was nobody that could dance yeah. like him. Like yeah, really I mean. Just crazy, crazy body, crazy. but but here's the thing: there was a period of time when his dancing was so polished that it all it it a lot of women used to say that it looked feminine because it was so it was so so too, it was too perfect <laughs> too perfect <laughs> right it was too perfect like his pointed toe like he was he like you tell me I mean he was about what 260 240 about no, 240 he, no not even Lance was like 220 okay mm-hmm. but he was short though like, yeah, he, yeah but he, I mean he was cock like these yeah, were ripped yeah, yeah. but yeah. I mean like he he used to do this dragon whip you never seen someone like Barishnikov does the thing where he spins and yeah, 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 the he, leg out to the side. Yeah, you keep and just whipping the you know, leg. Keep whipping like he would do stuff like that. But he was so <laughs> perfect, well, it, it, it gave off sort of a level of of femininity because it was too perfect, right? And so they they lit. And so they didn't get it all the time. They would be like some of the girls would be like it's like Peppa. She would be like, nah, he mm-hmm. yeah, he he's too soft. Right. You know what I mean? Because. It was too, it was so because it wasn't just it wasn't just here's a here's a crazy thing when I watched um what was the thing with Channing Tatum uh, oh yeah uh, what's the name of it uh God dang Magic it. Mike Magic Mike, Mike right Mike. so years I mean I'm, I did this for like ten years there was a, the guy from So You Think You Could Dance was the guy Twitch I don't know if you remember the guy who won won who you think he was his counterpart in the in the movie, right? I, I, never, the saw, I never saw the movie. I never, right, so, so, um, 
Now, Twitch was a classical dancer, right? And 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 Channing Tatum, it was he really in Florida? He stripped people. It's well known that he stripped and he actually. And when I remember when I'm watching the movie, I'm saying to myself, "Yo, this guy used to strip," because there was a there was a dis. It, no matter how like Twitch, the guy Twitch from So You Think You Dance was a better dancer, but. Channing Tatum had this thing where he communicated this masculinity that had nothing to do. It was another, like another thing. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, what's interesting is watching, you know, and, and that, that is so in everything. I mean, you could see it in the performance, but you could see it when you're, when you're watching a guy and you're on a date or watching with a girl and you're looking at the body language and you're looking at the way he walks and the tone of his voice, you could see the comment he's communicating this this masculinity that kind of makes them feel safe or this dominance but uh, but not but it's also that that where you get a guy who gives that you know like thug out dudes give that dominance and we like oh yeah he he's a beater <laughs> like, <laughs> like this dude this dude <laughs> he hits women on a regular <laughs> yeah yeah he hits women so it's 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 even in conversation on the phone the way you text all of that stuff is really, really specific about being confident um, and being precise, but not being where you give off this sense of being a, being a pushover. Because if you're a pushover, then if she could just run over you, then how do you how do you keep her safe if if she could just run over you? Right, so right. it's so it's almost like you're if you if you're if she could run you then it's not just that she can run you, but she's saying to you, how are you going to keep her safe on any context of anything when you can't even stop her from being abusive to you? You have no boundaries. You know what I mean? Right. Just letting them, letting them, cr- so even, I'm trying to put this in words, but here's what it is. Um, having boundaries and sticking to those boundaries are things that says to her, it, 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 it communicates your honesty and your, your, your righteousness. So if you don't like something, you have to be, you have to be confident enough to say, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to go to the ballet or I don't want to go to the opera or I do. I love the ballet or I love it. The simple fact that you can be definitive about what you like and what you don't like that the fact that you care about what your happiness is says that you understand what your value is. And you can and- also, make you can still make sacrifices so it's not as if you don't make compromises sacrifices. Com- compromises. compromises sure well, but i remember that's marriage my man that's, that's, that's <laughs> called marriage <laughs> but the problem with marriage is they do things it's they surrender things don't you can't some people have this impression that you can't say that you don't like something oh i have to do it and that's a compromise like my girl at the time was she goes uh when we move in together i want to do a little garden in the back and I go, okay, it's cool if you want to do that. She goes, would you be into that? I go, not at all. Like, right. I don't, I would not be, it would do nothing for me. But if you want to do it, I will help you. I'll facilitate I it. I will help you do that. But yeah. to be honest, I, it, that's for you. Just so you know, that's something you want. I, have, I would be more than happy to do that for you. But I'm not going to sit there and pretend that I also want to do that shit. You know, or that I also like, I do not want to go pumpkin picking. Well, if, here's the, if your here's heart the, is set on that, I'll go. But just and, so and right, right, and 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 understanding, yeah. understanding. Like I've said, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. And if you really want me to go, you can ask me to go. But understand that you're asking me to do something that I don't want to do, and I'm making a compromise. Now, if every time we turn around, I'm the only one making a compromise, then it's you're not. Right. Then, 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 and I don't mind, but I, but you have it has to be above. Like if you're just going, oh yeah, I'll do it. You're yes to them. I'll do this. I love park, pumpkin picking. I love apple right. picking. Right. I love. Yeah, yeah. Then you she thinks, well, you must love it. Why right. would you not do it? And then when you don't, when you, so if I don't like to do something, if I don't want to do something. I say I don't want to do it, and then I don't I, I don't do it. Or if you say, listen, I really would like you to come with me. Like, all right, I'll, yeah, it's not what I want to do, but I'll come. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a sour puss, but right. I, I want, I want you to understand that I'm doing this for you. For you. This is, this for, is you. Not for me. This is not for us. Not even for me. This is not, not for, for us. This is <laughs> so for don't you. Pretend because for what you. happens is guys get lumped into this thing. Like 
yeah, we're going for us, right? We're going for like, nope. no, not no. for us. For this you. Is for you. And that's okay. And that's okay because when I want you to do something for me. Right. Uh, this this has to be reciprocated. There has to be some kind of balance in that. And so if I'm only willing to do things for you and you're not willing to, then we don't have a relationship. Right. It's, we, we, uh, we talk about the whole thing when um, Keith and the girl and the Keith with the cabinets. You know, that he, we, we had a, a guy who, a guy from Keith and the girl and his, his ex-wife, ex-wife uh. kept leaving the cabinets open, right? right? And he kept saying, yo, why, they were married, newly married, they were like, why you keep, and I go, look, I predicted it then. The relationship's not gonna last because you. I'm. He's saying leaving the kitchen cabinets open makes me unhappy, and he's communicated that. And she's basically going, "Yeah, I don't give a fuck what makes you happy. I'm gonna do this anyway." <laughs> right. So there's no. And I mean, how long you been married, Ma? Uh, tw- oh, coming up on twelve years next week. Wow. So c- c- congratulations. But the thing is. If you if you're in a marriage and you your your wife doesn't give a fuck about what makes you happy, yeah, you, it's you, not gonna work. It's you gotta work. you gotta get out the. I mean, you, you need to care about work. her, and then there's the compromise in between that. So, and I will say this, I know men, yeah, being married for twelve years, you are gonna come in when you're younger and you be like, I ain't doing this and I ain't doing that, I ain't doing that. But as you grow uh, into a relationship. You go. You 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 start to compromise more on both sides, her right, right. and me. You know well, hopefully, saying? if you want it to work, you got to yes, do it on both because sides. Because that's just it's a it's a natural progression, and it's like, yo, I just you know what, this is gonna make her happy. Let me make her happy. You know what right. I'm saying? And she she does the same as me. Well, oh, I know this makes him happy. It ain't my thing, but I'm gonna make him happy because I, I don't right. think there's more. anything wrong with that. I think at all there isn't any. You should be doing those things. But the yeah. problem is, people uh, guys get into this rut of not. Well, they go the the, the happy they they go happy life happy wife right, right happy right. wife happy life but that means it's is happy husband or I'm getting the fuck out of here right, right, <laughs> like right. I'm leaving like, find a, 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 a rhyme for that one I need yeah. a rhyme you just said you need to uh, happy uh, me too otherwise happy I'm getting the, mother I'm out this bitch <laughs> I'm happy I'm yo nah this ain't this ain't working <laughs> for me so it is what it is but that's dope yo Mark um. Plug your social media and all the good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. yo, check me out. I, well, I'm going to plug the show. I'm on The Last OG. We oh, got nice. two, episodes, t- two episodes left for The Last OG. Uh, this is season three. It's on TBS, Tuesday nights, uh, 10.30. We got Tracy Morgan Star. We got uh, Tiffany Haddish. This season, we've had J.B. Smooth, John Amos, Anna Marie Hartford, Cat Williams. Nice. It, it's been a heck of a season. We got two uh, two episodes left. Uh, season one and two is on Netflix right now. We're waiting to see if we get season four. Check us out. These last two episodes. Derek's on that too, right? Derek Gaines? Derek, Derek Gaines is on it as well. Blows it up. Matter of fact, Derek Gaines is in the next episode, uh, which I wrote, and uh, he comes back. It's the first time back this season. So check him out. He's hilarious in it too this season. So it's, uh, uh, check him out. Uh, this this coming Tuesday, man. It's, it's some great stuff, man. Big we, things, uh, man. Yeah, 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 we and we Big we teams. looking for we looking for the the next season on that man. We gonna see what's happening. Nice, happen. Mark. Mark, you one of the nicest dudes I ever met. I I say that. Man. <laughs> and thank God you were there to balance Todd Lynn's bullshit. I appreciate you. I was balanced for Todd, man. I was balanced. I was balanced for him. That's what... <laughs> I don't know if you was balanced. You were more like the a guy on the trampoline where he hit it and then you went through the <laughs> through the circus tent, but. Yo, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, I, know, I appreciate you too, brother. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dre, talk to me, Dre. Just Instagram and Twitter, Andre D. Thompson. Hit me up. That's all, yeah. All right, Harry, talk to me, babe. Uh, you could always follow uh, what I'm doing over at Catalyst Wrestling on YouTube and uh, the Fight Network and all that stuff, Fight UK. And also, check out, speaking of YouTube, check out the Man School 202 YouTube. That's where all the shows are going up, some classic stuff, some new stuff. It's worth checking out, so definitely go check out uh, Man School 202. Yeah, everything with me is the either on Instagram, the Dante Nero, everything else, Dante Nero, Facebook, and everything else. I'm, I'm really starting to put more content up. The Patreon is getting ready to, uh, to blow up. Um, the merch store should be up in the next two weeks, so you guys can get a sweatshirt or a hat or something or whatever and represent for us. We appreciate that, and you can subscribe on the Patreon. Um, also, if you need a one-on-one consultation, call me. I've been getting a lot of consultations since this corona 
as you realize how many people are locked up with people uh, 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 locked up with people that they hate and they, <laughs> and they have no escape nowhere to go nowhere to go <laughs> Uh, so that's blowing up, but uh, you just go to DanteNero.com, click on consult, and you can book time with me. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back, WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? Yo, I love y'all. Rate and review us on iTunes. Um, listen to the YouTube, follow us on social media. I love y'all, and if you like what we're doing, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. All right, we are out. Peace. Yo, thanks, Mark. I appreciate you. No doubt. Hey, yo. <laughs>